If historical drama is your cup of tea, you land in the right page. A historical drama is a piece of art set in the past and is frequently utilized in the setting of film and television. It is also known as a period drama, costume drama, or period. Action movies and historical romances all fall within the category of historical drama. Whether you're new to see dramas or are a fan looking for new titles to watch, here are the best historical Chinese dramas in 2022 that will have you hooked. So before starting, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for our future updates. Also, please let us know what you think in the comments section below. So, let's start. Number 20. Oh my lord. Fuxian City is a place where beauty is held in high regard. To put it bluntly, you will be set for life if you've got good looks. As such, the Fuxian people spend most of their time trying to improve their appearance. But no matter what they do, no one can beat the handsome Lord Xianzui. Despite being the most good-looking man, Lord Xianzui has a cold, unapproachable and unpredictable personality. He is also a eunuch who is highly regarded by the city lord. However, Lord Xianzui hides a big secret, he is uncastrated and is only pretending to be a eunuch to uncover a mystery. By fate, Lord Xianzui meets Chen Yuyu, a witty and cheerful girl who is forced to marry him. While Lord Xianzui hides his identity and tries to trick Chen Yuyu, he unknowingly finds himself falling for her. Number 19. Sassy Beauty. Si Yen is a beauty blogger, and she is sent to a VR reality game, in which she continues to run her business and even falls in love. Si Yen, Snow Kong, is a famous beauty blogger, and she is sent to a VR reality beauty game set in a historical period. Once a spoiled princess has now become a lowly court lady. However, Si Yen manages to win the noble lady's hearts with her superb beauty skills and a range of unconventional marketing techniques she learned as an online blogger. Behind the makeup of unique styles is not just pretty faces, but stories filled with laughter and tears of these women from different periods, and how they interpret life. While pursuing her career, Si Yen unexpectedly meets many handsome young men, including the aloof Chi Yi, the loyal AI butler Jack, Deng Wei, the meant-to-be Qi Bao, the playboy Qi Xiao, the cool guard Wei Yinli, Lei Xu, and the nerdy Qi De. Because of these encounters, Si Yen embarks on a journey of growth filled with romance. Number 18. Miz. Cupid in Love. Bo Yen is an unfazed thousand-year-old immortal who has dealt with all kinds of mortal affairs. However, he accidentally screws up the marriages within the mortal world and is demoted from his post in the heavens. Bo Yen is sent to the mortal realm to experience the trials faced by the humans he spent so many years watching over. Falling from the sky, Bo Yen finds himself crossing paths with Shang Wanya, the owner of a successful matchmaking business, in a most unexpected way. A quirky young woman with quick wit and a brilliant mind, Shang Wanya isn't sure what to make of Bo Yen at first. But as they begin to spend more time together, it soon becomes apparent that they're tied together by more than mere coincidence. However, can a human and an immortal really be together? Number 17. Delicacy's Destiny. This lush series centers on palace intrigue and the demands of royal palates. A crown prince has rejected all candidates for the job of imperial chef, but young chef Ling's succulent commoner's dish wins him over. While Ling's savory meat dishes please most royal diners, the emperor and empress are vegetarians. Ling handles the setback but is betrayed by a seething noble consort. Also angered is the empress, who see that the emperor is enamored by her. Refusing the crown prince's plea to learn royal protocol, Ling is faced with choosing between her career and forbidden love. Number 16. The Four Daughters of Luoyang A story set in the Tang Dynasty follows the four extraordinary daughters of the Gu family that's known to specialize in beauty and cosmetics. The head of the family Mr. Gu, and his wife, Mrs. Gu, go missing suddenly, and leave their four daughters behind, the younger brother of Mr. Gu, Uncle Gu, starts to fight with the four daughters for their assets. Uncle Gu joins Gu family's competitor, Li family, and they force the eldest daughter, Gu Ruoruo, to marry Li Song, the second son of Li family, causing her to lose the right of inheritance. With the help of her three sisters, Guru Oruo uses various means to thwart Uncle Gu's conspiracy, 
and finally forms an alliance with Li family's elder son, Li Ku. They get married and thwart the conspiracies of their respective family members, and as they fight side by side, they become closer and fall in love with each other. Number 15. Love for Two Lives After Ya Liang Liang became a two lost youth who was lost in love and lost her job, she accidentally opened a time crack and opened the mysterious door of a parallel universe. Ya Liang Liang accidentally became the life-saving straw of the king in the parallel kingdom. When the financial fan Liang Liang meets the king in distress, when modern technology and ancient civilization collide, the wonderful connection of fate in the parallel universe has achieved the romance of Ya Liang Liang and the corental that spans time and space. The two met, supported each other, and finally fell in love. A hilarious and sweet love story. Number 14. New life begins. Because of a marriage election, girls from all over the world gather in Xinchuan for a special event. The ruling family will decide which of these young women has what it takes to marry the six male heirs of the family. Among this collection of women is Li Wei. She is an unassuming, unpretentious, and somewhat culturally awkward individual who has little interest in this contest. She would prefer to get on with her life and live a quiet, peaceful life in her hometown. But, to her surprise, she is selected to marry one of the young heirs, Yin Zhang. A quiet, gentle, intelligent, and somewhat introverted young man, he is arguably the least favored among the heirs. As such, his marriage is a mere afterthought to the Xinchuan rulers. They shunt him to the fringes of the court and charge him with menial tasks. At first, this union appears doomed. But after they start to get to know each other, Yin Zhang and Li Wei begin to form a close bond. Could their slowly growing romance help them form a relationship that could help them improve the lives of the ordinary folk of the realm? Number 13. Heroes In a martial arts-dominated world, two rival factions face off against one another in a bid for domination, the House of Sunset Drizzle and the Six Half Hall. Wang Xiaoxi, Joseph Zhang, is a young, green, but highly skilled novice whose master gives him a difficult first mission, he must carry a box to a contact at the House of Sunset Drizzle, and travel to a tavern in a coastal town to do so. During his journey he meets and befriends several like-minded peers such as Bai Chofei, Wen Ro, Su Mengjin, and Lei Chun. In the complicated world of Jiang Hu, he gradually matures from a muddled youth into a hero of his generation. But the Six Half Hall has got wind of his mission and attempts to intercept him. He outweets them, but when he reaches the tavern, he finds it full of cutthroat bandits who want to kill him and take the treasure. Number 12. Rebirth for You Zhang Baoning, the commandery princess of Jianan, grows up in the palace since childhood. She remains carefree despite knowing that there is no freedom within the palace walls and does not want to be used as a puppet. Thus, relying on her own ingenuity, she resists the fate of becoming a tool in the inner palace fighting. Li Qian, a guard of the Imperial Army, wants to understand the truth behind some events many years ago. He works hard to seek a higher position in the palace, just to get relevant clues. They are two people with vastly different personalities who meet by chance and love each other. In order to reverse their own destiny, they work together, look forward to breaking through the barriers of identity and stay with their loved ones for a lifetime. Number 11. Royal Feast Set during the Ming Dynasty, during the rule of Yunlin Emperor, it tells the story of a young girl named Yao Zijin, who entered the palace to become a maid of the food bureau. Here, she creates many amazing gourmet dishes that impress the forbidden city. As she works her way up to become the head chef at the imperial palace, she encounters an unexpected romance with Zhu Zhanji, the crown prince who is next in line for the throne. Through her romantic entanglement with Zhu Zhanji, the drama also showcases the historical achievements and family life of three outstanding emperors of the Ming Dynasty, portraying a gourmet forbidden city full of rich family affection, friendship, love, and humanity. Number 10. A female student arrives at the Imperial College. Story of the only daughter of the Grand Marshal, who grew up at the very border of the empire, 
where she developed into a free-spirited, energetic, and intelligent person. Yen Yunji, meanwhile, is the new acting head of the prestigious Imperial College, the place where the finest scholars in the land are trained. Yen Yunji has vowed to be upright and reform the college. Sang Chi decides to visit the college and see what Yen Yunji is like for herself, but the first meeting between them is problematic, as she stops the path of his carriage before it can collide with a noblewoman. Sang Chi also runs into Zhuo Wen Yuan, Ren Hao, her childhood friend, who is now residing in the capital. She tells him that she has promised to enter the Imperial College, which usually only enlists young men from noble families. Although the task will be hard, she will not give in easily, as she is hoping to fulfill the last wish of her late elder brother. But as she begins her quest to win acceptance to the prestigious institute, it appears that both her childhood friend and the righteous head of the college have begun to develop feelings for her. Number 9. My Sassy Princess Lu Ling is a young member of the royal family who has been granted the auspicious title of Princess Changlu by the emperor, who has a soft spot for her. She is aged 20, and until now she has lived a pampered and privileged life. She is capricious, impatient, and quite bratty. Even when people lavish gifts upon her, she treats them with disdain. She has a habit of rubbing people up the wrong way and acting impulsively, a fact that has seen her develop many enemies at court. Even the common folk have a habit of spreading malicious, and often totally unfounded, rumors about her. On her birthday, she decides, on a whim, to travel out of the palace to drink in a private room at an exclusive inn. She drinks herself into a stupor and is sleeping off the alcohol when Shen Yan, Zheng Yi Chang, a young army commander and an ice-cold martial artist stumble into her room after having been injured in a sword fight with a notorious bandit. The princess falls for this wounded warrior and tries to win his heart, although he initially doesn't seem very impressed with her advances. But, given time, could this unlikely duo strike up a friendship or an even more unlikely romance? Number 8 Mirror, A Tale of Twin Cities Within the six realms and four seas, there exists a dreamlike paradise named Desolate Clouds. Su Mo, the new generation sea prince, meets Bai Ying, a female disciple of the sword saint. The two of them unknowingly gets embroiled in a generation feud and struggle of fate. In the midst of the political struggles, Su Mo painstakingly loses his loved one. He then travels the world in cultivation for a hundred years, and returns with a newfound identity as the King of Sea. Su Mo meets Bai Ying again, a princess and descendant of a mighty sword deity. They are immediately attracted to one another and begin on a romance, unaware that they are effectively crossing enemy lines and sparking animosity between two warring factions. Their actions anger other deities and Su Mo is eventually expelled from the realm. Overcome with grief, Bai Ying attempts to put her existence to an end by jumping from a magnificent pagoda. Number 7. The Blue Whisper A powerful and talented demon master, Ji Yunhe has been blessed with a truly unique gift. Able to tame any demon, Yunhe should have spent her life traveling the world, helping those who might be in need of her services. Alas, the strict laws laid down by imperial decree have confined her to the borders of Demon Valley. Unable to break free from the deep, dark secrets which keep her confined to the valley, Yunhee finds herself in a truly unexpected situation when she comes face to face with Chang Yi, a merman brought to the valley by the cruel Princess Shund. Demanding that Yunhee grant Chang Yi the ability to speak human words, grow human legs, and pledge undying loyalty, Princess Shund expects Yunhee to follow her orders without question. But to follow the princess's orders, Yun He would have to enlist the aid of her adopted brother and sworn enemy, Lin Hao Qing, something she is loath to do. However, as Yun He spends time with Chang'e, she becomes torn between a choice of her own freedom or his. Number 6. A Dream of Splendor In the early 11th century, the future of the empire is in doubt after a damning painting of the emperor's past life goes missing threatening to undermine the imperial family. Gu Qianfan, Chen Xiao, the commander of an elite military unit, is dispatched to find the picture before it falls into the wrong hands. Zhao Pan Air is a witty and savvy teahouse owner in Xientang. Her business blooms as she awaits for news of her fiancé, who is trying to pass his imperial examinations. 
However, things don't turn out as planned when she is notified that her fiancé has passed the exam and is now an official in the capital of Beijing, with a wife. Not resigned to fate, Pan Air travels to the capital in search for the truth. She has joined forces with two women whom she has saved from the jaws of despair, Song Yin Zhang, Lin Yun, and Sun San Yang, Lu Yan. The latter was abandoned by her husband and barred from seeing her child, while the former was being abused by her philandering husband. The three women open a small tea house, which soon becomes the talk of the town, due to their diverse culinary, tea making, and musical talents. Eventually, Zhao Pan Air and Gu Qian fans paths cross. Although they initially mistrust one another, they start to realize that a closer relationship could be of mutual benefit. What will happen, however, when the romance begins to spark between them? Number 5. The Autumn Ballad Despite being born to the prestigious Zhou family, the witty and strong Wu Chiu Yan is the daughter of a lowly concubine. As such, the Chiu family doesn't pay much attention to her and are quick to marry her off when she comes of age. When her fiancé dies during the marriage ceremony, Xiao Yan is marked as a woman who brings bad luck to her husband. As such, she is forced to be entombed alive with her husband. To escape from this ill fate, Xiao Yan runs away and is caught by the cold-faced duke, Liang Yi. Determined to clear her name, Xiao Yan takes on the investigation herself, but she isn't the only one looking into the case of her newly departed husband. As head inspector of the government's investigative agency, Duke Liang Yi is determined to uncover the truth. Often crossing paths with Xiao Yan, the two form an unlikely friendship, which works out advantageously for both, as the closing of their case gets them both what they want most. But the fates that tie Xiao Yan and Liang Yi together aren't finished meddling just yet. When her family is threatened by an unexpected accusation, Xiao Yan and Liang Yi must work together once more to save her family from ultimate disgrace. As they work to clear her family's name, the sparks that often fly between them eventually ignite a much bigger flame. But can love blossom in the midst of a major family crisis? Number 4. Love Between Fairy and Devil Dong Fang Ching is the fearsome demon lord who wiped out an entire Paixian tribe before being trapped in the Haotian Tower. One of the immortal girls in the tribe is reborn after 10,000 years and goes by the name of Xiao Lan Hua. By accident, Xiao Lan Hua releases Dong Fang Ching Tsong, unaware of the bloodshed in her previous lifetime. Harboring ill intentions to sacrifice Xiao Lan Hua's immortal soul to undo a curse placed on him, Dong Fang Ching Tsong keeps Xiao Lan Hua close to him. But when, due to a mishap, Xiao Lan Hua unwittingly sets him free, he thinks he is able to escape. He believes that all he needs to do is sacrifice Xiao Lan Hua and he will be free to unleash chaos again and conquer the known world. There is a twist, however. In the process of setting him free, some bizarre magic appears to have taken place, and the two have swapped bodies. Suddenly, the fearsome Lord Devil is trapped inside the body of a puny female fair. And Xiao Lan Hua finds herself in possession of superhuman strength. If anyone learns of what has happened, he assures her, they will both be done for. But as they search for a way to undo the spell, love begins to cast its own magic spell. Number 3. Immortal Samsara Ying Yuan is the sovereign lord and protector of a fantastic heavenly realm inhabited by deities and spirits who live long, peaceful lives above the clouds, thanks to a peace deal struck between a number of rival kingdoms. One day, however, that peace is at risk of shattering when an elder of the demon world attempts to steal a powerful treasure that has remarkable healing powers, the four-leafed lotus. A fierce struggle breaks out and Ying Yuan intervenes to thwart the attempted theft. But in doing so, the treasure becomes personified in human-like form as two sisters. Ying Yuan is given the honor of naming them, and names the older sister Zhixi and the younger Yen Dan. As the sole descendant of the sacred four-leaf lotus tribe, Yen Dan finally transforms into human form. However, she is about to face the greatest trial of her life, falling head over heels for Lord Ying Yuan, the Supreme Lord of the Nine Heavens. The Number 2. Who Rules the World? The story of Hei Fingxi and Bai Fingxi, and the adventures they embark on together. The story is set in the Dedong Empire, consisting of six states, each ruled by a king. The imperial token is lost and whoever obtains it, can claim to be the next emperor. 
In Yang State, the king has three sons and he has not picked his heir yet and so the fight for the throne intensifies. Bai Fengxi is a female swordsman who lives and speaks freely, wild as the wind. Meanwhile, Hei Fengxi is the complete opposite, graceful, honorable, and tolerant. There is a saying in the martial arts world, wherever Bai Fengxi goes, Hei Fengxi is near. Even though the two are constantly at loggerheads, Hei and Bai Fengxi are always there for one another in adverse times. In the martial world, an ancient evil sect thought defeated, resurfaces after a century bringing destruction to the kingdoms and the people. The duo worked to bring peace to the martial arts world, tapping on the vast intel that Hei Fengxi possesses. But the scheming Hei Fengxi is hiding a big secret. Will Bai Fengxi ever find out? Number 1. Love Like the Galaxy the Chang Shaoshang is the ill-fated girl who's left behind by her parents due to war. Living under the shelter of her nasty aunt, Shaoshang has no choice but to put on a pretense to avoid being punished. But this has taken a toll on her emotional and mental health, and Shaoshang grows up to be both pragmatic and insecure. This hinders her when she's looking for a partner for marriage. The three men in her life, Ling Bui, who's the emperor's adopted son, Yuan Shen of the esteemed Bailu Mountain, and Lu Yao the aristocrat, have their own strengths and weaknesses, and it's up to Xiao Shang to decide who she wants to hand her heart to. She finds it hard to see the good in people, and assumes that everyone she meets is trying to get the better of her. She fends for herself in a town populated by people like her, who have been left behind by the war. One day, a talented, powerful, and highly influential general named Ling Bui, Liu Wu, comes to the town, and falls in love with her at first sight. He resolves to marry her, even though it will cause him no end of problems if he decides to pursue this union. She also warns him that she doesn't trust him, and that her stubborn personality might not be suitable for the wife of a general. But Ling Bui also has deep secrets, and there are facts about his true identity that even he does not know. Slowly, they begin to trust one another a little more, and start to investigate the truth about Ling Buyi's early childhood, family, and real identity. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoy this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.